So we'll, we'll continue the meeting. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I actually have to call to order again, but but this is a continuation of our, of our meeting tonight. Um, we, we heard the presentation from Kate on on the on, on the um, employees contract. Do, do we have any questions that weren't answered in the in the other meeting? I have a question. It's not on the sure. contract, but it's related to this to the um, civilian people. Can I ask it now? And you can tell me whether it's appropriate. So if we've added nine people to be civilian people doing this thing, have we reduced, and the police used to cover all that, have we reduced the number of policemen? I don't believe so. I think, uh, and someone else knows, I, I think what, what they've done, they just, they, they just aren't taking time off from, from their regular job. In, in theory, they're, they're doing other things at the same time. So we've yeah, added exactly. nine people to our police force, this effectively. Well, I, I, I wouldn't call it. They're they're really not on the police force. They're they're working for the the police department. No, but if the police department was covering the the phones, okay, or being the emergency service, and now they're not, that we have other people doing well, it, then. But I also I don't think these. I believe these people are paid by the hour. They're not. They're not salaried people they're they're so they're only getting paid when they're working so it's yeah. just a, there's is, is that fair to say yeah if you recall um when we originally voted to to add these people uh, for communication purposes it was because the police had to maintain an officer behind the desk and by freeing him up it was more cost effective than you also put another policeman on the street And then the other the other aspect is that it's it you're 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 you've got a, a dispatcher who's doing it fairly frequently um, rather than a policeman that is his time up is every sixty days or something where they're, where they're you know not as not as nimble with the with the whole procedure. No, I'm I'm comfortable with the civilian people doing it. I'm just wondering if it was a backdoor to increase the patrolman headcount because they used to allocate their time to the answering the phones. No, I think it probably just means they're freed up so they can go out and do more patrols. So the additional cost is is the nine civilians who are not making as much as cops, but doing that work, important as it is. And they they may be able to uh, during the school year, uh, be, um, you know, act act a little bit more around the schools, which which I think was talked about at one point. Anyway, that doesn't. Matt, can I just? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Sure. Sorry. I just was going to say that doesn't affect the contract. That's a budgeting question and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Jim, you had a question or a comment? Well, I was I was going to say I think this is this is more than fair. I you know I think that the people in those jobs um, in town hall do a great. I think they do a really good job. I think they deserve these very small cost of living increases. The only concern I had was that this this four day uh, work week being finally solidified in writing. Uh, you know, it was not started as a COVID response. It was started before that in response to horrendous traffic conditions, because so many of our employees come from far and far afield as a way of cutting them a break, uh, taking them out of rush hour on Thursday uh, and freeing them out completely on Friday. I know I'm not sure just as a as a taxpayer and user of town services whether it's working out to have town hall closed on Friday. But um, if this is going to be now in the contract as well, it should be. Um, you know, I'm not sure how those negotiations would go if people were told, "Hey, we need you to come back five days a week." So we're kind of locking into that uh, that commitment, I think. Plus, I, think of think of the money that those those people save by not commuting one fifth of their schedule, getting Fridays off. That's a bit of a bonus right there as well, too. I have a question. Then, is the town hall open for longer hours for the four days? Most of the departments stay Likely. open late on on Thursday night. Okay. The <laughs> idea being that it you know not everybody can get to town hall between 8:30 a.m. and 4:30 p.m. So why not have one night a week 
where they could, you know, get into PNC or get a beach permit, get a parks and rec thing or something like that. I don't know how much traffic there has actually been in those extra hours, but you know, that's not our decision. That's going to be a decision by the board of selectmen, I assume working with the town administrator. Well, I, th I think it'll be interesting to see because I, I haven't really um, seen any other town around us that does the same thing. Um, you, you know, if you go to New Canaan, you look at Greenwich, they, they have a five day work week. Um, and it, my only concern was I, I really wish that they would have done some type of a survey or whatever because because the constituents are the public. And, and is that something the public likes, the idea that they, they know the town hall is closed on Friday? But anyway, I, I don't think that's some, that's not a deal killer for us to, to um, agree, really throw out there. Um, Jim, just as a, a, I'm looking it up, and it was my understanding that the it's open from 8 a.m. to 5.15. I don't think they found people were showing up on Thursday nights. So they're open 8 a.m. to 5.15 for those four days to come up with their hours. Hmm. Okay. That, I'm looking at that's what's on the website, and that was my understanding. Uh, they did start, as you talked about, but I think that... Yep. Um, and I totally, I don't know. Who, I mean, the truth is, you know, I don't know that anyone's going to go back and tell people they have to go back to five days a week, no matter what we, the public think, which is a problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're on the record on that one, Lois. I'm so I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, you know, I, I agree. I mean, it's, cre it creates havoc for us. Um, trying to keep the meeting straight for the RTM and getting all the paperwork out and everything like that. It always, we end up with this rush on Thursdays that, you know, mm -hmm. we work five days a week. Our, our focus is five days a week. So, um, and that is not the, the focus. Um, and I must compliment, um, Krista and Kate, whom we deal with a lot for covering. I mean, they are not, unless they're away or doing something else, they are, you know, if we send something out and say, could you help us, you know, could you do it? They're paying attention to those emails on Friday. So it's not a critique yeah. of, of those people as individuals. Well, and a, a several of the departments, uh, planning and zoning and being a good one, I mean, they often are in there working on Fridays anyhow, just yeah. to keep up with the workload. Because if you have a meeting on Monday, you have to buy under... FOIA, you have to post that meeting 24 hours in advance yeah. and ain't nobody coming in on Sunday to post a, an agenda to a meeting. So that means it used to be by close of business Friday, but now you have to post Monday's agenda by the close of business on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're in violation of FOIA. And you also make my life crazy because I can't tell, you know, for TV 79, is this a real meeting coming up? It's on a calendar here, but there's no agenda over here. Yeah, that's a big an issue I've been, you know, asking to Krista about. But um, anyhow, four day work week. Yeah, there's no going back after you get people from get them down to four day work week. Yeah. Although I really well, think they do a, they do a lot of extra work and they deserve whatever they can negotiate. Yeah, and I, and, and I think that we need to we need to continue saying it doesn't particularly work well for us, but we really appreciate when you go the extra effort to help us out when we have real problems, and they yeah. do most of them. They do. So, yes, they do. So we're grateful. I, for I, I can say with conviction that David Kanoff was about not working a four day work week <laughs> the last two years. <laughs> yeah, seven and a half maybe. <laughs> so, do you want a motion? Uh, to accept but not reject, uh, Mac. Sure, that'd be great. Okay, I, I I move that we accept not reject the proposed town hall uh, union contract settlement. Uh, do you have a second? Second. Okay. So Tom, you second. And I think the easiest way to do this is there anyone who is voting no on this? Any abstentions? Okay, then we're, I, I will say that we're all in favor of it unanimously. Great. Okay, well, thank you. Now the, uh, so so that, that's done. Um, the other thing I just wanna talk about briefly is the um, thing that we touched on at our last meeting about, about recommending sidewalks to the town as a as a um, 
possibility to spend some of the money that's coming in from um, ARPA, the American Re Rescue Plan Act. And I, I talked about a little bit with, with Lois. Uh, Lois, you, you mentioned you think that they have put some money together? I don't know. I was hoping that you would get that information. I've been focused yeah, on the other pieces of it. Yeah, I think I, I think they, they they are putting pencil to paper, and and uh, you know it's my understanding that the um, uh, there there has been some you know in, input. I don't know if it really came from us, but uh, but about adding sidewalks to the to the money that the town has to spend. I have the whole list right here. Uh, oh, it, the, the their their approved or their list of approved projects is on the town website uh, under ARPA committee. And because um, where it is is it's in the middle of it has to get approved by the selectmen, the board of finance, and then the RTM. So it is going to come to us. Yeah. But Jim, yeah. if you have quick access to, I'll try to. But um, I'm looking at it, and I'm just looking to see the word sidewalks, but I don't <gasps> see. Okay, upgrades to auditorium. Mm, good. Yeah. Uh, I don't <laughs> see sidewalks per se. That's what but I think we should ask Kate because there's a lot in here in, you know, um, descriptive language. I think the point, the point was that, that we, we, we had our opportunity. We talked about it a little bit at the last meeting, but we didn't have, we don't have an opportunity at this point to add. They, they're kind of already, the wheels yeah. are already in motion. Yeah, it's locked in. It is. And I, I think I heard something that, that I wasn't sure it sounded like there was, if there was money, it wasn't a lot of money because somebody had brought asked something, but I, I didn't pursue the, the details of it. Um, it's really... Um, the, well, the ARPA commitment is 6.4 million. And they have pretty much spent it all, I think, with a small uh, rounding error, just in case prices go up on one or more of the projects. My understanding of how that's going to work is that um, the projects will be balanced across. If some projects need a little more and some aren't, go less, they're going to move money around as they as they need. And I think there's a hundred and some hundred and three thousand or something like that contingency yeah. that's built into that six point four million. But I don't. You're watching Channel seventy nine. I have, I have, I haven't paid attention. But that's why I didn't hear a whole lot of discussion about sidewalks. Um, and I did. No, I don't think it's there. Yeah, I don't think that's my concern too. That's sort of where yeah. I am. But I believe there will be public hearings coming up. ARPA, uh, the ARPA committee is going to have public hearings. And uh, if anything, anybody wants to raise an issue, mm -hmm. uh, this is not okay. chiseled in complete granite yet. Okay. Uh, but it will be, my, my sense is they're going to try and get the whole thing approved all the way through in March, I think. Um, and the reason is that some of the projects they're talking about are projects that are, um, were in the budget. And so they need mm -hmm. to know where they take them out because then they don't have to do capital raise um, debt or however they're going to fund them. And that lowers mm -hmm. um, the mill rate. So the idea is, I think they're trying to push it through in March so that they'll be in place before the Board of Finance in early April um, sets the budget and the mill rate. Um, and then it goes to the RTM. Um, and if they don't, then they'll move around. But that was the, if they can get it through. And there was no opposition to the allocations that, um, that were talked about, that were done. Yeah, the major infrastructure projects are only four. Grove Street, Tilly Pond, drainage upgrades. Saltbox, Coach Lamp, drainage upgrades. Those are streets in um, um, south of Naroden Heights. Rings Ed Bridge repairs and OKHS bridge repairs. I'm not sure where that is. Old Kings Highway, south. And then there's a number of projects that come in you know, in the hundred thousand dollar range and below, but uh, check. You know, look at the PDF. It should it should all be there. Okay. Jack asked Kate about that at the beginning of the F and B meeting. Do we have anything else, Mr. Chairman? Well, the only other thing I wanted to do an announcement. Of, uh, Seth asked me to to pass along. With, um, they would like to lock in someone from the RTM to get on the Blight Review Board, and that's uh, so I throw that out there. Um, it's, it's, it's something that the, the committee's been, been, been around for a while, and it, it, they really do good work. Um, you, you don't just 
attempt to condemn someone's home, <laughs> you're also basically uh, uh, working on, on getting some help with social services for uh, uh, people that, that tend to have issues with their home on the inside. Uh, uh, incidents of hoarding uh, are uncovered, which are really quite dangerous. Um, uh, I hope no one looks in my basement, but, <laughs> but, 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 you know, there are people that have, you know, stacks of magazines and things like that that are a fire hazard. So that, that's part of it too, is, is doing in, inspections. Um, but anyway, if anyone ha has any interest, please, please let me know and I'll pass it along. It's a great committee. I was skeptical at first of the whole uh, blight review process, but I think these guys have done and, and women have done a, an admirable job. Uh, George Riley is the chairman and really runs a good meeting. Uh, look on the TV 79 page. You can see all the blight review committee meetings. Uh, they have been very busy and they've been still frustrated with some cases going back several years. So they, <laughs> they need your help if you can join. I think one of the issues that the person that was on the committee from the RTM who really he was pleased to be on it, but the meetings were in person and they're at like 5.15 in the afternoon. So you really needed to be yep. local and not travel. And that's an important consideration. But, but the person did not quit because he didn't feel that he was contributing or he had any issues with the thing. It just was a time factor. And mm -hmm. he, I think he was really pleased with the participation on that committee. Okay. Well, uh, I, that, that's really all, all, all I had. If there's nothing else, I, I uh, suggest that we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, Jim, second. Okay, Penny, any any objections out there? I don't think so. So I'm going to say it's unanimous. Well, thank you all. Um, I, I don't believe we need to have a meeting Monday night because we kind of covered, covered things here, but we, we have the full RTM at, at 8 o'clock. And um, if nothing else, it gives Jim plenty of time to get prepped for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Lois, for your help. Bye. Bye.